That way, when you share shit, I'll be able to hear it. Oh, okay. Great. Maybe. I don't know. We'll we'll see. That was what that test run was for, but oh well. <laughs> I already shut down the app, so we're kind of screwed at this point. But the good news is, Yona, it's after the top of the hour. So we're, we're off and rolling. Let's get back harder. <laughs> Episode 27. That's right. And like good old U.S. Uh, Route 27. That's right. And uh, for those who were not aware of it, today, May 23rd, 2024, is officially World Invocation Day. Uh, uh, happy World Invocation Day, Yona. Let, let me be the first to, uh, to wish you and yours a, a very happy holiday. Invocation? Straight from my heart. What? Invocation? Um, what are we invocating? We're invoking um, the the new God that's going to come save us, the new Sky Daddy. You didn't know? Well, it wouldn't be Great Pumpkin because it's not pumpkin season. No, this is this is the uh, the All Father. This is the the every religion ever all wrapped up in one, and uh, we'll even we'll even throw the gays in there too. No, actually, we're going to throw them under the bus. They're the you sacrifice. Know, we're going to yeah. call this Great James Apple Day. Great James Apple. Because <laughs> everyone knows the, the, the only version of the Bible that counts, the James version, the KJV. Yeah. All the others, yeah. simulacrums. If, I, if it doesn't have the E-T-H suffixes on the end of the verbs, get the fuck out of here. Doesn't matter. None of this shit matters. It's all fucking systems of control. Like, I, I don't know how people don't see that. I really don't. But doesn't it sound cooler when you say systemeth of controlleth? No, it just makes you sound gay. But in a medieval way. Like right. you're wearing a smock. Oh. Commando. A- ask Friar Tuck. That, that is his name, right? The, the drunk monk with um, Robin Hood there in, in Nottinghamshire. Was that? I yeah. don't know. I don't remember those stories. I, was I wasn't paying and... attention to that. I was doing like uh, Zeus was smiting people with thunderbolts. That was pretty fucking cool. Yeah, I was thinking of the Robin Hood movie. The other... Oh, because they were talking about the abyss and the chick that was in the abyss with Ed Harris. Because it, it started with Cocoon. Because um, was it six or maybe it was Lone Star? Somebody was talking about old people having sex because they swam in the pool. Because there was alien jizz in it, and I was like, "Oh, that's oh, that was cocoon. cocoon, yeah." With Wilford Brimley, nineteen eighty-five. Yeah. They're like, "No, no, no." God I'm rest talking. his soul. He's like, "No, I think it was the abyss." I'm like, "No, the abyss is the one with the Mary Elizabeth menstruated on Antonio with um, Ed Harris." Right. Uh, that uh, was, was a, like, oh, a different yeah. pool. Yeah. And then I was like, "Wait a second, uh, that uh, Mary Elizabeth menstruated. She was in the Robin Hood too. She was the." Made Marion. Oh, that's right. She was Kevin Costner. It was terrible casting. In Robin Hood. Um, that she, I I I can't remember her last name actually. So I just came up with menstruated on Antonio. Sorry, yeah. Antonio Banderas. Really, I think I think it's Mastro Antonio. I don't know. It's it's Italian. Something like you know, something like that. Something it it like still that. It still sounds like period blood. But anyways. Um, Shout out Rothschild or Rothschild. Uh, Why? Red Shield. Why are we shouting out the Red Shield? Red Shield, a, a euphemism for tampon. Oh. Um, burn in hell. I mean, really, shouldn't you incinerate all tampons, especially the Rothschild one? Anyway, well, I mean, you're caught. supposed to dispose of biohazards in a proper receptacle, you know. I just wanted to take the proper time here to start the show to give proper credit and uh, a bit of gratitude and thanks to our friend Grimmy, a.k.a. the Grim Reaper, who's been working away, just chucking in quarters left and right on the old claw machine. All right. And boy, is I mean, he, he, he pulled out a Rothschild for us, right? Yes, he did. And, and, and he pulled out Heinz. Pulled out Kissinger. Yeah, he pulled, pulled out, out uh, he pulled out a lizard beast. I mean, That's he was on a roll guy. there for a while. Right. Tonight, yeah. we salute you, Death. Is anyway. all right. So, Yona, <laughs> let's let's go ahead. 
We're not. All we're right, just right. now five minutes in. Let's uh, let's throw it down. Who you got next on your Deadpool? Ooh. Oh, you already know. You already know who it is. He's sitting at the Bond villain table, and Doctor Evil's about to push his red button. He's already stepped down, or announced that he's stepping down. Yeah. I'm dropping clues everywhere. For those that don't know, I'm talking about our our good and dear friend, not um, Herr Klaus Schwab. Jawohl. 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 That, yeah, good old Klaus Schwitz. Um, that that was yeah. actually my, my pick as well. Yeah, your, your favorite Swiss German. <laughs> yeah. Jesus. Well, I mean, who who else is left? And shout out to, I want to give credit where it's due. I believe, and correct me if I'm wrong here, Drizzle, but I believe that it was Johnny Vedmore who did the breakdown on the Klaus Schwab genealogy. Going yeah. back on it. That was uh, Schwab Family uh, Values. Yes. Yeah. 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 Schwab Family Values. That's it. Yeah. He went. He went deep, deep on that. I mean, deep like. Uh, that terrible movie. I would movie say he with, went balls deep. He went deep like that terrible movie with Sasha Baron Cohen where he climbs into an elephant's pussy with his twin spy brother. What was that? And then there's a, a, a train of male elephants that then copulate yeah. in the elephant pussy while That's they're right. in the elephant uh, pussy. It's quality quality entertainment that you're talking about there, Yona. Fine Hollywood filmmaking at its best. Right. Um, so speaking of the Red Sea, um, <laughs> you like how I segue there? <laughs> um, maybe we should start at Camp Lemoyne again. Ooh, I mean, after all, all right, so, so six, six in Shout the... Shout out Africom. Yeah, six in the, the Rumble chat has thrown down the gauntlet now, Yona. So we've oh, got no, yeah. not Chucky the sausage. Finger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that muddies the water right there. Cause look, we've had stories of Klaus going into the hospital, right? Whether they can be verified or not, the stories are out there. Somebody put them out there. We had I, I do uh, have a motion for the table, by the yeah, way. I, well, I do have a motion to put forth when you're done there. Okay. Well, we've also had Chuck. Uh, going to the hospital to to get his uh, his cancer injections or whatever the That's fuck right. it is they're doing to him over there. Radiation uh, seats. Sure, radiation. Yeah. Well, That's my motion doing. on the floor is uh, so because it's kind of, of a toss the, up. Uh, I'm going to call it a jaw dropping piece of art that was unveiled. Um, you know, I I I like the sausage fingered part of the new sobriquet, but. The Chucky part always kind of threw me off because when I hear Chucky, I think of, hi, I'm Chucky, want to play? And even though he's a really evil demonic doll, he's still got more redeeming qualities than the actual living blood of Vlad the fucking Impaler Count Dracula yeah. has. So I was thinking, since the unveiling of the painting drizzle, I've been calling him King Pepto. Because looks like he's swimming in fucking... Pepto Bismol. Yeah, it so, really does. I don't know where they get off calling that red. That's not red. My my motion put forth here for for you and all of the chat now and later and here in spirit um, is to go with King Pepto, the sausage finger. I don't know. I'm still partial to King Chuck deterred. Yeah, because he is just such a, a giant blob of human waste yeah you know you're really going after my soft spot there drizzle anytime yeah. turd or shit or poop or fecal matter of any type is mentioned um shout out czech republic um <laughs> is, is he gonna recover by the way who which my minister fico robert fico uh i mean last i heard I mean, yes, they did try but, to assassinate the poor bastard. Well, yeah, he, he took five shots. Six. Six, I believe. He took six shots. So That's he got one more than Tupac. I was about to say, I thought... Took Tupac it and smiled, five, yeah. Five. Tupac took five. Yeah. And Fico took six. Took six. Wow. Yeah. 
Ooh. And see, 50 he may cent be the OG. Four. Fifty Cent took four. How many? How many did DMX take? DMX took a couple. Good old couple, Earl. Earl took a couple slugs. Yeah, I want to say three. So man, Fico really punching above his uh, weight class there. Yeah, I, I always thought Robert Fico to be more of a welterweight. Next thing you know, man, he, he he's ready to swing with old Cassius Clay. I mean, Muhammad Ali. There you I go. just I think it it shows his uh, his raw natural ability and the fact that he can handle himself in in pretty much any situation. You know. So the the critical thing now is to so go I mean, back on what are the last. Legend. What are the last things that Robert Fico said the last three weeks to piss off the powers that shouldn't be? That's the question. Oh, and you know, breaking news. I have some amazing, uh, you know what? I'm going to call this a feel good, warm, fuzzies democracy story. Are you, uh, is everybody out there ready for just a nice warm blanket of government at work? Don't you love it when government works and the democratic process and votes all come together at the last minute? Um, so that sounds scary. Um, let's see here. This is the uh, current copy of the Wayne County News. Um, oh wow, an actual newspaper. Yeah, I they it, still made those. Well, well, it, it, this one comes out twice a week, um, and this is the most. This one came out yesterday, Wednesday, May the twenty second, twenty twenty four. Wayne, part of Huntington, West Virginia, is in Wayne County, um, and Wayne County is about mm, three miles from my house, right across the river here. Anyway, as, as the locals say, out Wayne when you're going. Out Wayne, that's Out Wayne County. The one in West Virginia, not the one in Michigan. Uh, that would be Detroit, different Wayne County. Anyways, um, I would imagine there's quite a few Wayne counties in these here United States. That's right. There's a Wayne County, Kentucky as well. Shout out Monticello. Hey homies, Lake Cumberland. Anyways, uh, yeah, there's a big uh, Civil War battle down that Wayne County, Kentucky with Zollicoffer. Felix Olicoffer, uh, Confederate General. Anyway, so breaking news uh, out of Wayne, West Virginia. Wayne County's emergency medical services excess levy passed with one more vote than was needed to hit the 60% approval mark following a re canvas of last week's primary election in the state of West Virginia. During canvassing in the courthouse in Wayne on Monday, May the 20th, the Wayne County Commission made decisions on 77, does that say mail-in? By Jove, it does. 77 mail-in provisional ballots and 10 late absentee ballots. Of the 87 ballots received Monday after the election, 51 were approved to be counted, 35 of which were counted fully, and 16 of which were counted partially. Partially, I'm sorry. And 36 ballots were rejected. The additional ballots counted on Monday took the excess levy from 59.90% of the vote to 60.001% of the vote in favor of the new tax. Oh, yeah. You got to give more money to the government now? Oh, it gets better. Barely. What's the new tax for? Is that going to save us? Is that going to protect us from the bad people? It passed by one vote out of a total. And I know now. You're shitting me. How many votes were cast? Okay. We're talking about a total of 7,455 ballots. 
of which 4,438 And it passed by one paper. fucking vote. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah. That's bullshit. Four, four. And so all, after the vote was counted on election day, the tax failed because it was 4,438. But it jumped up to 4,474 well, you know. after they added the extra ballots on Monday. So this is where it yeah. gets good. It it's always gets good when you go back to the last fucking page. This is where they had the good shit, folks. Barely above the 60% required support for county or city excess levies, which is a euphemism for taxes. What an incredible victory for the citizens of Wayne County, period. Wayne County Commission President Jeff Maddox said, the real wonderful thing about this passage is now me and my co-commissioners can get to work putting our plan together <clears throat> to spend this money. The 39.9% of the people that did not vote for it will benefit from this as well. It's not Republican ambulances, nor is it Democrat ambulances. It is ambulance service that will be enhanced for all of Wayne County and all of the citizens of Wayne County. So I cannot tell you that I am anything short of overjoyed. Commissioner what, Robert what Thompson was wrong pointed with out the way the ambulance services are right now. Republican turnout was 45%. Oh, well, this is so they can get the super duper enhanced EMS software and services. So this is a tax that was pushed through by some vendor that's now going to be working with Wayne County, providing their EMS call-in service and GPS GIS service for dispatching. And so they're like, well, it's going to cost the county this much. And the county was like, oh, wow, we can't afford that. Let's see if we can't get a tax passed. Oh, the tax failed. Oh, but it only failed by uh, how many votes? Oh, well, let's just well, let's, we, let's we ought to be able to uh, find those votes over yeah. the weekend. Yeah. We do it all the time. What do you know? We found exactly the exact number that we needed That's to right. have the one vote to make it over the 60% threshold. Because That's I just right. did the math. One less vote, and it's 59.999 instead of the 60.001. This is, I think. Where anyways, there is a will, there is a way. How enough. much money are we talking about? Okay. Maddox said previously that the uh, overall what, proposed excess levy. 10, 15, 20 million. 25 million tops. That's to my best offer. About $2.8 million over four years. And the increase in levy funding would constitute about $112 per year for a typical home assessed at 96. Oh, so this is going against all of the landowners. So it's a property tax. It's a property tax rate increase. In America? And so guess what, folks? All you people that thought you owned your private property. You don't. You never stop paying rent. Yep. The only difference is, instead of your landlord being some jackass that's bald that gives out candy at the park from a white van and wears a members-only jacket, hi, landlord. Um, instead, and you're a fucking pedo, you goddamn landlord. Anyways, uh, for those that actually have a deed to their property, your landlord is the courthouse, and you yeah. have to pay your property taxes to the sheriff, or they come and kick you out because they've sold your land on the courthouse steps to someone for your tax lien. Yeah, for pennies on the dollar. Which include the miraculous new excess levy in Wayne County that passed by one vote. There's more. There's more, but it's just pissing me off now. It's just pissing me. There you go, folks. That's uh, there's your feel that's good democracy in action, right there, Yona. Fuzzy democracy in action. That's right. In the good old Westy McWest part of Virginia, not to be confused with Western Virginia. For Heartland those that of wise, America. For those that are wise, you'll know that wise is Western Virginia, not West. Anyway. 
wise West Virginia. But heavy on the banjo. In fact, hmm. I was just outside of wise West Virginia in a gazebo at the Brakes Interstate Park when I, I, I noticed written on the wall, pooping butt. So I thought, that's funny. That's cool. You know, Virginia is for lovers. You know, Drizzle and I know. I'll, I'll use that as my little video on um, TikTok, you know. No. No. Nope. No. TikTok denied it. Vulgar content. Yeah. Too vulgar for TikTok. Oh. Yeah. It was, I literally it was a have disappointment. a well, video on TikTok where there was nudity with dangling poop. I believe they call that like Cab Calloway music. Scat. Oh, I thought it was Cleveland Steamer. Yeah. Yeah. That too. Um, but that was on there. Yeah. Pooping butt. Oh, so well, much. we got our first official strike uh, on the Liberty Radio channel on TikTok this week, Yona. Because I appealed, was we it, we got another strike. Delivered? We got well, no, because I was putting up clips from the Chris Rantcast interview, right? Oh, and we got into got, some wild shit in that interview. I'm not gonna, uh, uh, you know, try and downplay. Yeah, it. Like, that that was a yeah. really good interview. I can't believe he went so long. Uh, I guess that's just how he does it. I don't know, but most so people I got a strike like, and I appealed it. Hour. Yeah. But I appealed the strike, and they were like, uh, no. It sticks. How many strikes on TikTok? Is it just like YouTube, two strikes, and you're out? I don't know. I honestly don't know. I, I, this is the first time I've ever actually had to deal with one of these platforms where I'm having to like appeal judgments and that sort of shit. I did not expect... TikTok to be this strict. TikTok is really pissing me off. Twice now, I've had to go in and delete my own videos that I uploaded. Because when I uploaded it, the video is of me sitting at a grand piano playing. Oh, yeah, those have been coming music. up in my feed. Yeah. Uh, I know the ones I mean, you're I talking a, about. I put a bunch of those up there. There's like, I don't know, there's 10 or 12 of those now of just, you know, me sitting at a fucking piano playing. Live on a grand piano. Um. A- anyways, point being, um, or they kick you out of the hotel. Tw- yeah, th- that's happened too. <laughs> um, twice. Uh, I go to then check the profile, and and see how many people listen to the video, and I go to listen to the video, and stop my music. And when oh, I yeah, upload yeah, yeah. it, I made sure it was my music, and they decided, you know what, we're gonna put somebody else's music on there. And and the fucked up thing is, it was the same song twice. Yeah, because they were probably trying to push that song. I've noticed yeah. them adding music. Oh uh, no, to the videos the that, I that I uploaded that they that they used two different songs to cover it up. I had to upload it three times. The third time has stuck, and that song would be White House Crack Pipe. Oh well, obviously that's why. First I think, I, first I think I that song is more well video. known than than you know, Yona. Yeah. I think that song has gotten around. <laughs> like YouTube knows about it, Twitter knows about it, Facebook definitely knows about it. That one that yeah. one had some legs. Man, I, you know, I I forgot I got a strike on Facebook for that song too. And I got a strike on YouTube for that. But I uh you know I've never gotten a strike for um, fart noise on YouTube. Well, I've why never would you? That's right. That's why I didn't. That's right. And of in course, YouTube's Rumble, wheelhouse. Rumble has not um, given me any shit for fart noise. But I've never tried to upload fart noise on YouTube. And I, and I was able to upload fart noise on TikTok. I think you'd be all right. Obscene. Unless somebody else has already uploaded it and tried to claim it as their own, I think you would be all right. I don't. I don't think they're gonna do anything with that. It's. Yeah. It's but absurd enough. That, that's a, a completely, totally original fucking song. Well, right. That's what I'm saying. 
They're more oh, likely to bury it than they are to mess with you over it. Well, I, I tried to keep it junior high enough. I mean, that's what happens to my stuff. It just gets buried. Like, good luck yeah, finding it. Yeah, I have it. noticed the, the numbers have fallen way off. Um, you know, like, uh, I, I don't know, we'll see. I, for me, it's it's really hard to get emotionally invested in any of the metrics or numbers that they give forth, because I know it's... Well, they're all lies. Algorithms and bullshit and manipulation and... It's all manipulation. I, That's all it is. I, I don't really... I just don't really care that much about it. But the reason why I was so... Uh, landing so much at the last minute here, jumping into the streamy lab. Um, yeah, on the uh, new music last night, there was a song. Uh, the song itself dropped six days ago, but the music video for it dropped. I want to say this Tuesday. Anyways. It was featured as one of the main entrees served up on last night's new music uh, potluck right. here. At, right, uh, part of Grand the Port poultry Port offering. Uh, and that was Joey Cool with the Vibe Check. Ah. So, you know, anytime you're cooking um, poultry, you are going to want to use a thermometer and you're going to want to vibe check it. You know, it, you don't want to start carving that thing up on the table and still got pink in it that was a pretty good that. track i i dig his work make sure it gets up to what what is it 165 degrees internal temperature something like that 165 uh, 170 yeah 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 i yeah. think that's what it is i think that's what it is allegedly so anyway, i don't know um, there was that dude that was eating raw chicken every day for like 80 some days straight and then he just nobody heard from him again from the time I got home and then was uh, with the baby and then with the kids and then put the kids to bed at about 10 after 9 and immediately jumped into <coughs> Vibe Check or Viper Check, as I'm calling the remix there. Because um, I planned for the video to feature Robert Fico. Um, and so the whole the music video is going to be a tribute to the Robert Pico. But the song I just finished it, so it took me from nine ten to nine fifty seven. It took me forty seven minutes to make that song from scratch. Because now, thank shout out to my homie Dead Fella, he hooked me up. I've got a thing where I can make my own um, kick beat. And then I've got my own baseline maker. And then I've got my own 808. And so now with these all these different plugins on the Studio One and then the Contact 7. Blah, 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 blah. It's just instant, man. I just start fucking looping. Copy, loop, copy, pay. It's like on uh, that movie Short Circuit with Johnny Five the Robot. <laughs> you know, reading through a book. Just, I'm just flipping that sounds through that like fun. Record. Bam! And let me see how long this thing is. I haven't even cut the track yet. What that sounds like out? next level shit, actually. Uh, six minutes. Six minutes long. Like, let me cut this motherfucker. Now, let's see. Export. Uh, it's making an MP3. Viper check. We're going to call this live, re live mix. We're, we're throwing this shit out live. Do what? Save. Uh, um, okay, it's Viper. So are you sending it over? Is that what you're doing? Yeah, I, well, I, I've got to get the, uh, the digital audio workstation to take a big healthy shit and poop it out. Ah. Wait, who's, who's the guy that said this song? Oh, Joey Cool. Sorry, yeah. Joey. And and cool, of course, Joey. Cool. Oh yeah. All right. Uh, so, do you want to hear who checked in this week, Yona? Yeah. So we uh we had Kazakhstan 
uh, over there in in the the Stan region. Of yeah, the world. they just moved their capital recently. Did they really? Well, yeah, they were. They were it used to be a Stan, and now it's in uh, Almata. Yeah, uh, it's, it's kind of a dictatorship, is it? Lula, Lula down in bit. Brazil. Uh, he checked in to to see what we were up to, uh, and India also. Uh, was very interested in what we were talking about last week. And uh, Romania as well, allegedly, but I have a feeling that was one of the Tate brothers. So I'm not, I don't actually count that one. I know why Kazakhstan tuned in. We were talking about throwing the Jew down the well. Remember that Kazakhstan is the home country of Borat. Gotcha. All right. That makes sense. Now now it all makes sense. It all makes sense. That makes perfect sense. Yeah. It makes perfect sense. Oh, I can throw it over on Dick Sword. There we go. Wait, can you play music off Dick Sword? Yeah. I don't think you can hear it, though. Yeah, I'll just play it over the... the, Yeah, it'll be fine. Let me see. All right. Wait, what did I call that song? Viper Check. All right. Man. I don't know. Maybe. All right. Um, Boom. There it is. And you say it's, oh my God, it is almost six minutes long. Uh, which. Oh, it doesn't. Well, it actually ends at 554.25. Anyway. Wait, okay. It's still going to bump it up to the next whole number. Yeah. Wow. Oh, God. All right. So you want me to play it now? Um, well, uh, I, I kind of feel obligated uh, to, to just do a uh, prefunctory check. Uh, for those uh, playing Scrabble tonight, that's your mystery word. Uh, hopefully you can get on the triple word tile. Um, prefunctory. Uh, make sure that Fico is still alive. Cause I, I would hate to play a Fico sample and poor shit's already bit the dust. So, hmm. so let's see. Robert Pico, right? Oh, and he's Slovakia, not Czech. Well, that's awkward. A little awkward. That's all right. Well, see, because Czechoslovakia used to be one country. Well, but yeah. They split up. They split it up because uh, progress. All right. So we'll uh, we'll give this a spin. So recovering. Slovakia's prime minister remains hospital. And I'm from the three hundred and four. She says she loves the trip, and this a bop. I'm the cream of the crop. This is banging. Oh, are you playing it? Yeah. Oh. Oh, you got the 
the chat's moving. And this is Bob Reed. I'm the cream. But crop. If you don't pass a five chat. Reed. God damn it. Never mind that. Fucking I just made the right. baby jump. Okay. We want the bone. This Medellin, I just hit my oh my god, trouble. Yo, let's get drunk. Call them bitches <laughs> up, you know which one I want. And you know I'm on the skunk. That's a chair, man. If the time it put it down, I'm aware, then. This is just a stunt. But I don't care, man. Take off in this paper plane, that's an air, man. My favorite Hannah Muller's impression is vain. Only AI know what I was breaking ankles. Catch me in the villa or the grilla eating mango. we robbing with the squad in the scrippers of the tango. Hashtag Thrusty. I'm a whole vibe. If you don't pass check, they ain't sliding with the tribe. Just the, just the way you're living, this the that I applied. They say, where we going next? Wherever I decide. She say she love the trip. Good man. More of that. Definitely more of that. Yeah. That's what the young kids call the house music. See, I thought you were talking about uh the song that you and Deadfella released a few days ago. Oh, I didn't think you were talking about somebody else's work. I thought you were about to plug your own work, and then you went on and Media Monarchy. Like, yeah, I think that played on Media Monarchy today. Did it? But but you beat him. You you beat once again. You beat James Evan Pilato to the punch and debuted it last night. Although I haven't heard you attempt to say the name of that song. Nope, and I won't. I mean. I, I tried to write it out in English so that anyone could see it's uh, Dlaiga. Yeah, I wouldn't have gotten anywhere close to that. 
Dwali Gunt means um, uh, blue jay, blue bird. Just because it refers to the comet, the blue comet, the travelers, the spirits that travel across the great mystery and bring us greetings and tidings from all of our homies all around the universe. It's high as fuck. Because, um, uh, you know, it, it it's kind of... Um, adorable for those humans that think they're the only life intelligent life in the expanse of the great universe um, clearly there's aliens just ask Falfurious County Texas anyway hold up I don't get that reference I don't know my oh. Texas history I haven't had to take the test yet well, it turns out that the aliens are 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 uh, piling through fast and furiously through Falfurious County on U.S. Route 277, which is about uh, maybe about 40 minutes north of Harlingen and Brownsville. There, right across the um, Rio de las Bravas mean, from Matamoros uh, to Maulipas. You mean migrants? Yes. Okay, I thought you were talking about like little gray people. I'm like, why? Why would they do that instead of just well, what they usually? They do? are similar, except that they're little gray and brown versus just little green men. Well, but they're they're bigger than the little gray alien, though. They're human size. They're just like I mean, bite size. I'm, I'm gonna tell you what. If you, fun if you size. Put they're fun size. Overall, if you, if you had E.T. and coveralls eating some Reese's Pieces at 5 a.m., standing next to Manuel and uh, Alejandro there at the Home Depot parking lot, he'd be the same height as all the other guys that can roof four apartment buildings in five hours. No, I think he'd, I think he'd still be just a little bit shorter. Until he's Because I think, I think they're neck. supposed to be like dwarf size, you know, like three, three and a half he feet has- tall. E.T. has the extendo neck. Remember when E.T. gets excited? Oh, I know. The ladies were crazy neck. about that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And his neck and fills with blood. And, and then he has... I'm old direct... enough to remember that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Shout out to E.T. And his darling daughter who really made E.T. proud when she was elected mayor of Chicago. Shout out Lori Lightfoot. It always amazed me how much that movie captivated people. Yeah, that was Steven Spielberg. Yeah, it was. Had words in it, too. Cussy words. Yeah. And and then next thing you know, E.T. got into some cocaine and hookers and uh, well, I mean, actually you know. got into a wild three-way with Beetlejuice. And as a result of Beetlejuice and E.T. fucking, Lori Lightfoot was born. You're welcome, Chicago. That's anyway. right. Steven Spielberg's but, contribution to society. Right. Um, that's speaking right. of it, contributions, Everyone Jonah, in Cook County doesn't want Lori Lightfoot ever to be mayor again, I assure you. No, they don't want her to set foot anywhere near Chicago ever again. Uh, I'm pretty sure. But so I was trying to think of ways to generate money for uh, the the media production, right? Because the more money we have to spend on media production, like the more drugs we can get and all that sort of shit, right? And the more stuff we could put up because we actually have uh, a tremendous wellspring of hours and hours of journalism and video footages and all kinds of other shit that folks. We just don't have the time or resources to get to yet. Ellipsis dot dot dot. Right. So as I was brainstorming ways uh, to generate <laughs> revenue, I think I, I had a master stroke, uh, a genius idea. I'll lay it on you. Let me hey, know what hey. you think. All right. Liberty Radio branded guillotines. Yeah. Do you think there's a market for it? Yes. Liberty Radio branded guillotine um, cigar choppers. Like the kind that you use to chop off the I was thinking, the again, cigar. like more human size. You know, kind oh, of well, get in on work. the industrial side of, of the business. Well, yeah, I'm talking about the kind that'll work on a Cohiba or a human finger. 
or an Israeli penis. It would probably fit through that. Um, shout out Inch Dick Force. Um, you know, you you know what I'm talking about the little pocket guillotine yeah. snippers for yeah. uh for for, for chopping off the end of your cigar. Yeah, I know what you're the talking about. The type of uh, audience that Grand Theft World and the autonomy community at large attract. Is the kind right now that quite likely could be enjoying a fine Cohiba Cuban cigar while uh, sipping a nice brown bourbon whiskey over some uh, different shaped ice cubes. Because well, correct, believe There's... you me, that the, the the viewer I'm talking about right now, I'm talking to you, buddy. Yeah, yeah, I see you right there. Those are not square ice cubes. Those are round ice cubes. Because you got class. And I noticed. Right. Anyway. Those are the nerds. That's fine. I understand, like, the audience demographic and the reports that they send and all that. I get all that shit, right? But there's also the activist uh, segment of the, the greater Grand Theft World audience. Right. Right? Who wants to go out and enact change in the world. And I'm like... Dude, we kill two birds with, uh, I mean, probably even maybe three, four, or five birds. You know, if you catch them on the right day and stars just align, bam, there you go. It's, it's like, it's, it's, it's a win-win because it's a public service and it's a moneymaker. You know, we ought to be able to put together our own type of Ikea furniture kit where all you need is like a, a little hex bolt. But... We have to use Robertson screws. Fuck Phillips head. They always came out and they fuck up the whatever. Fuck Phillips head screwdriver. So we're going to go whatever with Canadian Whatever we can corner style, the market on, man. I don't care. Canadian style Robertson screws with the square head, you know. And, uh, and it, you know, come in a small box. Grand Theft World, Liberty Radio branded guillotine. I mean, think Pop about that it. that fucker open. Get your little Allen wrench there. You know. Some assembly required. People still talk about the French Revolution to this day. Like, you can go to Paris and you can start up a conversation about the French Revolution instantly. That's right. Right? In well, fact, there's still controversy somebody, today whether or somebody not Somebody had Antoinette, to make that possible. You know, did Marie Antoinette actually say, let them eat cake? Who the fuck cares? Who the Everybody fuck cares, thought- man? Heads Everybody need thought to roll. that she said heads that need to just roll. let them eat cake. And meanwhile, uh, as I'm translating from the French, the peasantry was literally every time a horse would shit in the road, they would run out and fight over the horse shit because there was undigested kernels of corn in the horse shit. And this bitch is in the Palais de Versailles saying, just let them eat cake. Wow. So how out of touch can you be? So when the word got around that this bitch is saying, let them eat cake, they were like, no, nah, bitch, let's chop off your fucking head instead. Shout out Maximilien Robespierre. Yeah, anyway. but uh, supposedly that's a media lie that was yeah. propagated by the media at the time and right. pinned on Marie Antoinette when she didn't actually say that and she lost her head because of it. You know who it was? I bet you I know exactly who it was. It was fucking uh, Robespierre. Yep. I bet he was the one that started that rumor. He was yeah, a fucking psycho, man. Robespierre ended up it's, killing it Donald kinda Trump. Kind of like the Donald Trump of his day, yeah. Literally, his right-hand man, Danton, ends up being killed because that's when you have uh, La Reine de Terreur, the, the Reign of Terror. Um, For those... Uh, Gérard Depardieu fans out there. He's one of the most famous um, Satan worshiping pedophile movie stars from France. Shout out Gérard Depardieu. Um, and uh, yeah, so he's played the role of Christopher Columbus. You know, that movie sucked. But he played uh, in this other movie that I'm mentioning um, called Danton, uh, which is all about Robespierre and the guillotine and everything. And um, if you speak French, it, it's a pretty interesting movie. Um, if you don't, um, it's a great way to read subtitles in English um, while you're hearing French. 
There may be a, I don't know if there's any dubbed versions or not. Nah. Although, if, if I was going to see a dubbed version of Danton, I would want Gerard Depardieu doing his parts in English. Because you got to love it when a super duper fucking Frenchy McFrenchman goes to speak the English. He's very nice, you know. I mean, he literally, when, when Depardieu speaks English, Literally sounds like fucking Monty Python's Flying Circus, rude Frenchman from the top of the castle. You know. Um, I wave my private parts at you. Your father was a goat, and your mother uh, smells of elderberry. Yeah. I think that was John Cleese, too, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's, that's right. That's John Cleese. I fought in your general direction. Good stuff. Really good stuff. So, Yona, Even, you're, you're farther north. I for checking the guy's Slovakia. Yeah, I really got farther north. I, I well, yeah, Lake today Mary. you did, absolutely. Oh, um, Lake Erie? That was, a, that was a hell of a weed run you made. <laughs> Holy yeah. shit. Yeah, I, I can understand why, way. though. Went all the way to the other Wayne County. Right. Wayne County, Michigan. Wayne County to Wayne County. There you go. But, so, the, the media has been telling us, both the, the mainstream as well as, you know, the everybody else, that we were supposed to have, like, a biblical plague of insects this summer. Right. They're going to crawl up out of the ground. They're going to be everywhere. They're going to be loud as shit. They're going to be getting in everything. They're going to jump in your food. They're going to go to work with you. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I mean, actually, even here locally, like the doctors have been talking up that this is the worst year ever for grass fleas and deer ticks. and. No, I'm talking oh. about the cicadas. Well, yeah, now, this year, it's, it's a strange confluence of two different kinds of cicadas that are coming out this year, and it only happens, I think, once every, was it, once every 277 years or something fucked up. You're right, whatever. Where are they? Yeah, I haven't seen them yet. Am I just am I jumping the gun? Are they more like midsummer type visitors? Uh, I would have ex from the, from the way that they've been hyping it up. I was like, oh, okay, so it's like as soon as it starts warming up, I would have thought they're gonna they be popping out. out of fucking I mean, everywhere. I mean, spring the spring is already broken. I mean, we're we're quickly approaching summer at this point. Yeah, we've been into the nineties for several days. God, I don't know what the fuck is up with YouTube. It's got this new format where, like, I can't find where the share. Oh, there it is. Let me just copy that. Okay. This is the single most awesome video I've ever seen. And it happened yesterday in a place called Greenfield, Iowa. I sent it to you on the big sword. Um, what? And I, I've got some Lord. video that I'm uh, that I uh, took today that I'm going to send to you on the um, the degooey cloud or whatever it is. Um, oh, good. Because Lord. I went through a, uh, a a windmill farm, and anyways, my my homie, the fearless fucking storm chaser, um, Reed to the Timmer, uh, was in Green. Was it Greenfield? Greenfield, Iowa, I think it was, uh, you know, driving parallel to this classic black stovepipe tornado that's ringed with seven white little cyclones at its periphery that are in a ring rotating the opposite direction of the big mile and a half wide black stovepipe tornado. So it looks like the, the wig on the Bride of Frankenstein. It's got these white stripes. It looks like it looks like a barber pole, like a, like a, a holy candy shit, candy. man. 
and and it goes right through a fucking wind farm and just you're seeing it as it just chews up the fucking windmills and then it makes like a fucking orbiting ring of debris like like planet saturn with rings like have you got did you see the video oh yeah it's playing right now oh 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 yeah yeah there it is holy yeah, this cow this is the single most intense fucking tornado punch i've ever seen because just because it's so goddamn powerful that's a mile and a half wide what you're looking at wow and then it hits the fucking yeah yeah there it is bruh that's uh that's intense yeah yeah, you think? Holy shit. Yeah, God damn. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, uh, <laughs> God. if, you've, if when... you've ever heard of the earth changes before, uh, you might you might want to start studying up on them again. Uh, see? Uh, see, that's what I mean. It's like fucking candy cane. Yeah. What the fuck is that, man? God. Yeah. Wow. Uh, wind power versus power of wind. And Mother Nature wins again. <coughs> Mother Nature is undefeated, as a matter of fact. It's Mother Nature because the weather's a bitch. That's why. There you go. That is unreal. Wow. I can die without seeing anything oh, like that up get, close. Wow, and look at that debris. Wow. Shredded those fucking windmills, man. And those windmills are made like fucking aircraft. Well, they're, well. <laughs> well, yes. that's not. As a matter of fact, <laughs> yes, they are made like aircraft. Shit falls and, off of them all the damn time. Yeah, and then they just crumble to the ground. Yeah. Wow. Sometimes they burst into flames. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Wow. So that's what happens when an EF5 Oof. tornado rips right through the middle of some fucking windmill. Wow. I'm sure it seemed like a good idea to put those windmills there at the time. Wow. Yeah, I, I saw that. I saw that, that video. Insane. I, uh, because I've got him in my feed. <laughs> can Can you tell why? Um, and um, early and, warning uh, signal. What was it? It was nine o'clock this morning. I seen that video. I just watched about thirty seconds of it, and I had to go. And I'd been thinking about it all day. I was like, man, I, I really gotta get back and watch more of that video. Um. Because on the thumbnail, it showed the windmill getting chewed up. But I I just now finally got to see it happen live on air. And it's kind of awesome. I mean, I, I'm sure there were some people who were rooting for the windmill. Yona was rooting for that fucking tornado. And it did. I was not disappointed. I just kept thinking all day long driving down the road. Man, I know when that tornado gets to that fucking windmill, it's just gonna chew that motherfucker up. And I thought it was just instantaneous, but no, it took a, it took a little bit because I noticed first I saw the propellers come off of it, like the the ends of it, but it was still spinning. It just had shorter three like stumps spinning around it. And then mm -hmm. there's that moment when the whole fucking thing you see it just poof fucking disintegrate. And then the base of it just kind of bloop, fucking slumps down. Wow. So was it all just like windmill farm or did it, did it hit a well, town? We actually, uh, my mother-in-law said that the tornado that touched down in Raceland, Kentucky and Ironton, Ohio yesterday was the single most powerful storm she's ever seen. In her life, that's every something. single tree is broken in Ironton, um, and that was yesterday. Uh, there was also a touchdown near the Huntington Mall, out where I was working, 
Um, and it missed me by about five minutes. Um, so, yeah, really, really striking close to home yesterday. And uh, tonight, I think from 11.30 to 2 a.m., we're under tornado watch again. Nice. And so, I mean, if you're going to do it minutes. at any time of the day, that's the time you want to do it. 30 minutes. Best time for a tornado is at night when it's raining hard. Right. And that way you, you only see the tornado when, when the people are usually flat. asleep. Yeah. That makes it cooler, though, because then you're like, wow, I, I know something's coming. Then you see the lightning flash and you see that huge mile wide fucking black stove top on the ground and you shit your pants. Yeah. Well, Hopefully my favorite, take- my favorite is always like, you know, you, you go through all of your end of a day stuff and you're like five minutes from getting into bed and you got like maybe one more thing that you need to take care of before you can go to sleep and the power goes out. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, hopefully if you see a tornado outside, you'll do the sensible thing. Grab your cell phone, run outside and film it with your cell phone. I will say I have noticed a lot more power outage uh, action in the 2020s as compared with like any other decade previously. It's it's a very stark contrast. It's almost like there's something going on with like electricity and magnetism and, and that sort of thing. I don't know. I'm not a scientist. I probably shouldn't speculate on this stuff. It's really I'm just weird. pointing out observations. It's weird, like, seeing hurricanes with no rain, rain with no wind, wind with no rain, storms moving from south to north, storms moving from east to west, um, yeah. or ass backwards, as they say in these parts. Um, very, very strange stuff. Yona pro tip, cover everything with a blue tarp. You should be fine. Yeah, we'll see. Results may vary. Make sure the blue tarp is waterproof and properly secured for um, at least Cat 5 hurricane winds. There you go. All right, so we... 160. 160 MPH. Yeah. We've been teasing the people uh, with this pretty much for the last hour. Because that's, that's what you do, right? You, you, right. you toy with your prey. Uh, it's called edging. edging. There you go. There you go. It, it's also, edging is part of scissoring. Anyway, so, go ahead. Uh, I'm to understand that there is a weed apocalypse happening in your corner of COVID land right now. Is that right? That's why you had to take the, uh, the, the lengthy road trip today? Uh... Well, it was more of a voluntary thing. I had other connections, but I wanted to go there because I liked the variety. And I was not disappointed. Last time there was 25 to choose from. This time there was 31 different flavors. God damn. damn. That's like going to fucking... Uh, it's what's like a co- candy Baskin store, Robin? man. Baskin yeah. Robbins ice cream shop. 31, right? Baskin Robbins, 31 flavors. Fuck yeah. Yeah, man. And that's how I ended up with the apples and banana medallion, which is a total cannabinoids of 36.55%. THC... 28.94%. That's strong. That's pretty strong, yeah. I mean, I don't remember what I've got right now. There, it's somewhere stronger. around 30%. There is stronger. Let, let's see. Yeah, yeah. You know, I haven't taken a, a hit of the deep breath. Um, ah, there we go. THC, 34.51%. Hybrid, and it's got the three skull and crossbones on it. Activation time, fucking immediate. Oh, I love this. I love these labels. That's my kind of product right there. Fucking immediate. Thank you for the deliver on demand. 
It's like, yeah, I could do habanera or jalapeno or serrano or chipotle. There's other peppers, but fuck it. YOLO. You know what I'm saying? That's right. Going Carolina Reaper, buddy. Anyway. So it was just, it was like 600 miles, man. Can, can you for the like, weeds where, where, where it's like uh, it's a disco yes I can even see the red hairs and I'm very jealous because uh, everybody ah. knows I love I love the red hair and as we say it doesn't Cherokee matter whether or, it's uh, on Mary Jane or some other woman uh, when he's, uh, we say uh, hoagie, smoke more of the weeds uh, wait how do you say that uh Squeezy, squeezy means more. Squeezy, like squeezy, right? But squeezy, 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 ganula, ganula. That that's weed. Ganula, squeezy, ganula, hoagie. Squeezy, ganula, hoagie. Yeah, hoagie nice. means smoke it, smoke it. So squeezy, ganula, hoagie. Smoke more of the weeds in Cherokee. There you go. That that's your Native American language lesson for the night, folks. There you go. That's a bonus. Like folks didn't even know they were going to get that before they tuned in. That's called extra value. And and for those that have ever smoked a hoagie, you could actually say hoagie, 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 and hoagie literally means smoke this. Not to be confused with hokey. Which is a turkey that lives in Blacksburg, uh, Virginia. Anyways, right. go hoagie. Allegedly. At the uh, Virginia Technical University. Vatek. I don't know. I, I was kind of leaned a little bit more toward the Cavs, but I mean, I, I was a Cavs fan back when they had Ralph Sampson. And, and shout out Charlottesville. Oh, I was yeah, forced just, to be a Virginia Tech fan because my father went there. Go hokey. I guess I was supposed to mean something. I don't know. I've never well, even you know, been to Blacksburg. You know, it, it's kind of a stretch when you have to go all the way back to Ralph Simpson to root for the Cavaliers basketball team because um, have the Cavaliers ever beaten the Hokies in football? Once or twice, maybe? Like since the, the, since the 90s? Nah, maybe once. Uh, I couldn't. Maybe once, yeah. Like maybe back when uh, the Barbers were at UVA? Virginia Tech, like, football is the only thing that matters. And the sad thing is, they've had some really good basketball teams. Hell, they had Bimbo Mm -hmm. Coles and a bunch of other great, you know, point guards and forwards. Anyways, a couple of good centers at at, uh, Virginia Tech, but it's always been, you know, the basketball program's always been in the shadow of the football program. They're just fucking Blacksburg, Christianburg, the whole fucking valley there along New River. They're just fucking football nuts. And West Virginia is football crazy, too. Oh, yeah. Very football crazy. Go Mountaineers. You don't years. really get into the basketball until you get down into the bluegrass, into the middle of Kentucky. And then, well, yeah, but... like. You know, Lexington, Louisville, Indianapolis, Bloomington, like Southern Indiana. The, basically, the Kentuckiana area is like, just like still to this day, whenever you're driving through there, every barn, every outhouse has a basketball hoop on it. Every kid's out there throwing a fucking basketball. I mean, it's like the movie um, Hoosiers, right? Hmm. With Gene Hackman, you know. It really is, you know. But. Outside of that, everywhere else, it's it's football's the thing. Even like with the ACC, I mean, unless you're like, God forbid, like a Duke fan or, or a Turd Heel fan or whatever, God bless your soul. Um, then I guess you root for the basketball team because your football team sucks. Anyway. Yeah, the same could be said of Maryland. Yeah. So it, Which it's is very like the, rare. The, diametric opposite of Virginia Tech. The basketball team has always overshadowed the football team. It's it's the the weirdest fucking dynamic. Yeah, so the point I'm bringing up the round sportsy McSportsballs here um, is 
I don't know of too many schools where the basketball team and the football team are both fucking kicking ass. It's 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 a very rare combination. There's a few schools like uh, Michigan comes to mind. Michigan's had some great mm-hmm. basketball teams and great football teams, right? No, Schellenbecker. Bo Schellenbecker. I think that's his name. Shem Becker. Shem Beckler. Bo Shem Beckler. Something yeah. like that. Yeah. Who can forget the Fab Five? Right. Set the world on fire. Chris Weber. Hey, yep. call another timeout. Oh, you didn't have any timeouts left. Oh, that's a technical foul. Guarantees the other team just won at the last second by foul shots that you caught. Yeah. Ooh, it still not, stinks. Not it? saying he did it on purpose, but, I'm, you know. Jalen Rose is still mad at him. Sports fans love and their Jamie gambling. I, I, I would be, too. I don't blame King and Rose for being mad at Weber for fucking it up. Ray Jackson just blew it off. And then there's the other guy I can't remember. Yeah, I don't think anybody ever remembers him. Poor fella. Yeah. Poor fella. Was it in the port guard? That's what we're leaving out of the Fat Five. I got Jalen Rose, Jimmy King, Chris Weber, Ray Jackson. <laughs> Was that Juwan Howard? Yeah, Juwan Howard. That's the one I'm sleeping on. Hey, fuck you, Juwan yeah. Howard. <laughs> well, yeah, because after college, he went to the Wizards and like nobody ever heard yeah. of him again. Yeah. Well, I mean, he made the pros, but what did he do? He went to the Wizards. Yeah. Well, he, he got a check. He made some money. Yeah. Good for you, buddy. Go Wolverine. Yeah, everybody got their payout. It was all good. Oh, man. Shit, how did we even get there? I don't know. I, I started talking about sports for some reason. All right. You know, but at Get Fact Tartar, we cover every single colored pie in your little Trivial Pursuit cake piece that you move around the board there. And so, yeah. you know, we cover and then fads. So. We cover sports. We cover weeds. Um, you know, we cover democracy and with your warm, fuzzy moment there. Um, and then, as promised, I, I've, I've been talking about it for so long. I'm not going to forget this time. I'm coming for you, buddy. That's right. Uh, let me pull up my tabs here. Oh, I've been waiting for this. Did my homework this time. Fucking Stop whispering. Ah, I'm speaking about everyone's favorite British zoologist, Peter Dajak. Oh, that some bitch. All right. British. I mean, yeah, we we can take a dump on him. And president of Eco Health Alliance. Uh huh. You mean the Wildlife it, Trust? That's right. Yeah. It, totally not greenwashing. Um, yeah. Totally not funded completely by uh, King Chuck. And, and for those uh, that were wondering how to say it, some say Bangor. That would be wrong. It's, it's, it's Banger. Banger. Like yep. bangers and mash. Banger, Maine. University of Maine. Um, I'm sorry, Banger University in East London. Uh, the other Banger. But they say Banger there too. Uh, right, but they mean something different when they say Banger. Banger like sausage fingers. That's right. Um. <laughs> well, it's England. Right. Yeah. Bangers and mash is sausages with... Mash. There you go. King Banger. Yeah, King. Wait, King Pepto the Banger Finger. We'll keep working oh. on it. King Pepto and the Banger Sisters. There you go. I like Rosie Palmer and her sisters. There you go, the Banger Sisters. Um. So uh, let's see here. 
School of Life Sciences, Kingston University in Surrey, England in 1990. Uh, and then in 1996, Dash Act moved from Surrey to the United States and was affiliated with the Institute of Ecology in Athens, Georgia, at the University of Georgia. Uh, and then he moved over to the National Center for Infectious Diseases at the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention in Atlanta, Georgia, 1998. Let's see, 2001. Yes. Let's see, 2001. He then becomes executive director at the Consortium for Conservative. I'm sorry. The Consortium for Conservation Medicine. Mm -hmm. um, and then he taught at Columbia Mailman School of Public Health. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. He taught where? Columbia University Mailman School of Public Health. Oh, you mean King's College. That's uh, what well, they used to call Columbia. They called right. it King's College. King's College, because it's in Kings County, New York. Totally uh, not named for like a regent or anything like that. Just coincidence. Absolute coincidence. It's a word. It's a word in English. In King. fact, it was uh, established, I believe, in 1750. Yeah, it has absolutely nothing to oh. do with the people from right. Saxe Coburg Gotha. I don't know why you would even ask that question. Ah, oh, 1754. Fuck! Fuck, I was so close. You were close. Close enough. 1754, established in King's College on the grounds of Trinity Church in King's County, New York. It is the oldest institution of higher education in the United States. <laughs> anyway. What a coincidence. Uh, um, oh, wait a second. I've got this bowl of deep breath. Yeah, I better take a deep breath before I get into the juicy stuff here. I would uh, recommend we, it. I would recommend we it put, because we're, it, we're putting it, this up on TikTok, right? Oh, sure. Why not? <laughs> we just fucking burn it to the ground, man. I don't give a fuck. But no, it's this. This would be the good, the the proper place to take a pause and and do what you need to do because we're going to start digging into the real meaty stuff now. I think we've set the stage well enough. Can you predict what I'm going to talk about next? Uh, is it is it going to be his TED Talk in 2012 where he talks about the emerging uh, pandemic pathogens that he, uh, he is uniquely qualified to uh, help track? Well, um... Or did I go too far? Oh, that's strong. That's really strong. No, you didn't go too far. I, I, I was wanting to get into the um, USAID uh, program, United States Agency for International Development. Oh, yeah. Our good friends. Um, totally not a CIA front. Yeah. Anyway, also um, known as the CIA. Yes. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> so. University of California, Davis. Yeah, you're not fooling anybody, boys. We all know what USAID is. You, you guys may remember when I mentioned an infamous um, policeman, Albert Pike, who pepper sprayed kids at point blank mm -hmm. range. Yeah, we uh, did put that clip up on TikTok. Uh, and that was at the University of California, Davis, right there outside of Sac Town. Well, also at the University of California, Davis is the One Health Institute. Which partnered uh, with uh, USAID uh, to do the PREDICT program. And uh, PREDICT was launched in 2009 in response to the influenza A virus subtype H5N1 bird flu outbreak of 2005. Uh, it was designed and overseen by Dennis Carroll, then the director of USAID Emerging Threats Division, with epidemiologist John Mazet of UC Davis as its global director. Uh, from 2009 to 2019, PREDICT collected more than 140,000 biological samples from various animals, potential 
pandemic reservoirs. Mm-hmm. And God knows if you've got like those to go uh, digging in animal shit is what that pathogens means. of pandemic. These people are potential. fucking weirdos. Remember that pathogens of pandemic potential or PPP. No, no that's gain of function, Yona. That's gain of function, right? Um, terminology. These are all dog whistles. Um, anyways, from 2009 to 2019, Predict collected more than 140,000 biological samples from various animals' potential reservoirs, including over 10,000 bats and 2,000 other mammals. Predict worked in regions including the Amazon basin, Southeast Asia. China, and the Democratic Republic of Congo. Predict partnered with EcoHealth Alliance for its work. Uh, uh, anyways, so EcoHealth Alliance. Uh, anyways, back to Peter Daszak, president of EcoHealth Alliance. Let's see, where were we, 2019? Um... Uh, 2019, he was over in uh, China. That's right. Uh, with his his good friend and uh, probably, uh, you know, speculation on my part, uh, but most likely mistress. You know her as the Batwoman. That's right. Um, that would be a Xi Zhang Li. Zhang Li That's right. from the Wuhan Institute. Of voluptuous I particularly like that picture of them drinking wine together and laughing. That's it that's really one of my personal those, favorites. Um, that picture of those two laughing and wine drinking together puts off major James O'Keefe vibes. Yeah, it does. To Come to think about it, yeah. Yeah, it really does. I'd love to have a video on that. Shout out James O'Keefe. <laughs> what was the name of his... Uh, what was the name of his little media thing? That they, well, he actually got kicked out of it. Oh, Project Veritas. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, Project Veritas kicked out James O'Keefe. So now he's a solo dolo. Hey, it's better to go that way. Um, I, I well, guess so. See, I mean, uh, you know, Steve Jobs got fired from the company he founded. So uh... as of the year 2021, Peter Daszak is the president of the New York headquartered non-governmental organization, EcoHealth Alliance. Correct. His research focuses on global emergent diseases, such as severe acute respiratory syndrome, uh, sorry, um, Nipah virus, um, MERS, Middle Eastern Respiratory Syndrome, uh, uh, RFV, uh, Rift Valley Fever, Ebola, COVID-19. Yeah, he is actually one of the world authorities on the Nipah virus, and uh, he will tell you so himself. That's right, Nipah in the bud. Um, Dajak's organization has administered more than $100 million in U.S. federal grants Mm -hmm. to fund overseas laboratory experiments, and that was just from 2019 to 2021. uh, spoiler alert, it's now 2024. Back to you, Drizzle. Yeah. Well, don't forget, uh, Dashak was also invited by the World Health Organization to become part of the investigative team that would visit uh, the BSL, whatever level it is, facility over in Wuhan, China, as well as, you know, the now infamous wet market. <coughs> You know, the team that was supposed to determine what the actual origins of the virus were, whether it was a natural occurrence or something that leaked from a lab where they were doing experiments to make viruses more contagious. I don't know. I'm having a a hard time seeing how all this fits together with King Chuck and British intelligence, Yona. Hmm. Maybe you can help connect the dots for me. Well, I'm going to say Peter Dajak is um, am I all of the above. Pick a number. Number six. There you go. 
am I number six? Shout out number six. <laughs> well, this is something that I found uh, when I was doing my own digging on Peter Dashak back in, I think this was 2021. Uh, when I published the Dash Hack Chronic, uh, Chronicles? Yeah, I think it was Chronicles. I don't know. I'm not looking at the title at the moment. Uh, I found oh, out that Dash Hack is not just the president of EcoHealth Alliance. He's also a member of the Cosmos Club. Have you ever heard of that before, Yona? Yeah. Yeah. It's located in Washington, D.C., like literally right down the street from where I used to live. And it was founded in 1878 by John Wesley Powell, along with several of the founding members of the National Geographic Society. The Cosmos Club was intended to be like a private gentleman's club, not the kind that you guys are thinking about, different. Well, maybe kind that like kind. The... I don't know. I wasn't around at the time. All right. Kind of like know. the Good Guys Club when, you know, Oprah and, and Bill Gates sure. and the rest of them sure. get together. And, sure. You know, but they, overlooking Central Park in New York. Right. Well, they state as their goals uh, the advancement of its members in science, literature, and art, whatever that means. Um, so, you know, here's the interesting thing, though. Individual names of the club membership are allegedly secret. And it is claimed to number in excess of 3,000 people, with the club proudly boasting that it has been home to three U.S. presidents, two vice presidents, 12 Supreme Court justices, 36 Nobel Prize winners, and 61 Pulitzer Prize winners. So not a center of power. Uh, you know, not like anywhere that you're going to disseminate marching orders or talking points from not, not something that can act as a leverage point on the greater society at all. I do believe that the cosmos club is one of the authorized travel agencies. If you need to book a flight with the Lolita express to the little St. James Island in the uh, beautiful United States uh, Virgin Islands. Right. Uh, anyway, just one uh, of the many services that they provide. For those that forgot, okay, back on February the 19th, 2020, an open letter was uh, authored by Peter Dashak. Uh, and he Although paid, we, we were not told that at the time. He, he paid 27 biostitutes, as uh, Pensacola lawyer Mike Papantonio refers to them. Shout out, Pap, um, by ostitutes. Um, this will definitely get us a strike on TikTok. <laughs> uh, uh, and anyways, uh, he managed to get it published in the Lancet. And, you know, we stand together to strongly condemn conspiracy theories. I'm sorry. It, this would be Peter Dash. I mm -hmm. have to use my British voice. Uh, we stand together to strongly condemn conspiracy theories suggesting that COVID-19 does not have a natural origin. That's close, but it's not quite douchey enough. That this corona coronavirus originated strictly in wildlife. Right. Yeah. And Wet remember, market. remember in Angle the letter, one. he specifically said lab release, not lab leak. Right. Yeah, because that had nothing to do with the DARPA program Operation Disperse. Nothing. To nothing. Do. Nothing. No. no. DARPA funding and Pentagon oversight. No, nowhere to be found in this program. Anyways, um. In 2020, Dajak was named by the World Health Organization as the sole United States representative on a team sent, but he's British. Ah, never mind. Well, he's, he's, uh, yes. So he's a U.S. Yeah. citizen. He's a British citizen, I believe. I was just about to look it up on Wikipedia. Because uh, again, passports. I could swear I remembered seeing this when I was doing my research on him. He's, he's um, got at least 
he's got at least three different passports and oh at that's least normal at least that's normal for people that are spies well, correct did, did i say that but i time? believe edit that out. Edit if that i'm out. not mistaken shit i think they've yeah they've scrubbed it from his wikipedia page now uh he's ukrainian uh, yeah. he was born in ukraine that's right da, 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 da. Uh, I would, you know, yeah, I can't. They really all. scrubbed his Wikipedia page. This is crazy. Doesn't have That's any of the information about I, his family I'm there. Literally anymore. laying the basketball off the fucking backboard so that you can dunk with the Ukraine. At last, yeah. that segue I've been waiting for. That Ukrainian segue, drizzle delivered, and we didn't even plan this out. That this shit just happened. Well, I mean, we we have been planning to go in on Dash Act, but. The Ukrainian segue, the third passport. Anyway, go go ahead. Oh no, I was I was pretty much done. I just want to make sure that people know. Uh, I'm gonna reiterate this again because uh, everybody, I'm sure, still is scoring the uh, cancellation of the Eco Health Alliance grad from the Department of Health and Human Services as a huge victory, uh, and in many ways it is. But don't forget that his other grant from the Department of Defense is still active. Right. So the U.S. government is continuing to fund EcoHealth Alliance, whether the media tells you about it or not. But don't worry. They're not paying Paul anymore. They're paying Peter. That's right. And Peter will not rob Paul to pay Peter. Because Peter's already getting paid. Paul will rob Peter to get paid. Because Paul still works at EcoHealth Alliance. And so I mean, it all hand, ends up right going hand. back to the Just bankers follow the in cup. the end. It doesn't follow matter. the cup. One of these cups has the money. Follow the cup. Three card money. Follow the cup. Which one has the money? Yep. I mean, you know, it's like um, when Europe buys all of this Indian oil from Mumbai. You know, totally not Russian oil. <laughs> right. <laughs> I don't know if you've seen the oil transits from Russia to India these days, but it precisely matches the exports to Europe. But anyway, we'll just go through a third party vendor. There you go. Thanks, Bajit. <coughs> Fill her up. <coughs> so, Yona, have you been keeping up on your uh, Tucker Carlson episodes? Yeah, I've been seeing a lot of Tucker here lately. He's. Really? Have, have they been feeding you Tucker too? Well, in, in TikTok. I really? Get getting hit with Tucker and TikTok. That's crazy. I get I get oh, it on so, Twitter. So that would be that would then make it Tuck Talk. Yes. Or would it or would it be TikTok? Or is it Tuck Tuck. Um, <laughs> anyway. So Tucker is now pimping the new Eric Prince privacy focused smartphone. My question for you, Yoni. I've seen all kinds of Eric Prince commercials too. He's got a couple on Rumble. Yeah. Oh yeah. And it's yeah, yeah, pretty yeah. wild to well, see. Well, he's buddies Eric with Peter Prince Thiel. So throwing himself out there. Hey, dudes, just an American bro like you, a veteran, just trying to make a living here. And I'm like, this this motherfucker is a member of the single most richest goddamn family that lives in the yeah. state i was just in earlier today um his baby sister um betsy d boss got a political appointment as the secretary of education took an absolute fucking wrecking ball to that um and of course eric prince uh has used his money to go around the world and play um gi joe as uh Right. Well, let's see. First, it was Blackwater, and then it was Z spelled with an X E, and then it was Academy. And um, what's he selling now? <laughs> Privacy focused <laughs> smartphones that totally are not going to harvest your data. <laughs> so, my question, Yona, is with that we now have the champion of free speech touting the solution to government and big tech surveillance from maybe the biggest pr 
private military guru on the planet, have we reached peak absurdity yet? Yes. Or is there still another level? It's peak absurdity because, uh, you know, just like Peter Dajak, Eric Prince has three passports. He actually has citizenship in the kingdom of Saudi Arabia. That does not surprise me. Citizenship in the, uh, what is, what they say, uh, or United Arab Emirates, um, the UAE for sure. Um, shout out Emirates Airlines. Hey, if you got the money, fly first class on Emirates Airlines. You'll thank the owner. And, uh, you're and again. I'm talking to the guy with the guillotine uh, for his uh, Cohiba cigar. That's um, now on his third glass of beautiful brown bourbon whiskey with the round ice cubes. And you know, you got to think here at this point, Drizzle. This poor fella. Yeah. Got to be freaked the fuck out. Probably. But okay. while the Yona has your How attention, the fuck sir. Does Yona, no. That I'm smoking a Cohiba, and how does he know that the ice cubes in my drink are round? You, you just have to, to deal with not knowing the answers to some questions, sir. But while the Yona has your attention, manufacturingreality.org forward slash provide hyphen value. Uh, that's, that's where you can help us keep producing uh, this wonderful Enter- entertainment that we bring to you each and every week, sir. Uh, now, back to your regularly scheduled pro- programming. You know, the, the fucked up thing is the, the guy with the uh, round, we're going to call him round ice cube guy. Um, round ice cube guy knows a little bit about, knows something about Camp Williams and Bluffdale, Utah, don't you? Uh, that would be home to the National Data Center where all of the entire Yona library is currently stored in my dossier. Um, but uh, unfortunately, much of the Yona library is not. And uh, and so what I've decided to do, um, because, you know, I had an issue with my show earlier this week, uh, Monday night. Um, well, not an issue, really. Uh, I normally smoke sativa, and I decided to smoke some indica, uh, at which point I passed the fuck out about a half hour before I was supposed to start my show. I heard that. And it was the inaugural simulcast where I was going to inaugurate simulcasting over uh, Rumble and YouTube and Rockfin and all these other platforms, thanks to the number six um but instead i woke up at three o'clock in the morning with um unfortunately there was i had fallen asleep with a bag of chips in the bed so I oh no on top of a bag of chips um and really really salty chips because like i had salt like my whole arm was covered in chip salt so really it's like confectioner sugar almost um so I'm, Licking the salt, you know, literally licking the salt off my wounds, and oh my god, what have I done? And then I look at my schedule, and I'm like, "Fuck, I gotta do this this day. I gotta do this that day. I gotta do this this day. I've got this day job, and then I gotta help with the kids, and I gotta do this. And if I I don't know when I'm supposed to do this show. I mean, I gotta go to work at nine o'clock, three o'clock in the morning. Mm. So then I smoked weed for two solid hours, and then thought. Fuck it, I'll just do it now. So I did my show at 5.30 a.m. <laughs> Tuesday morning. Um, and I really... Viewers? That's why I'm mentioning this now. I really want to thank the up to 12 viewers on Rumble. Wow. That, that managed to tune in when I hit peak viewership at 6.05 in the morning. Thank God for you hard-working motherfuckers drinking coffee or still tripping on meth on the third day without sleep. Whatever. I don't care. Just glad you were there. 
And, and, you know, when I got done with the broadcast, it was at like 20 views. And I was like, wow, that's, that's the worst show I've ever left on Rumble. But to be fair, I did it at, you know, five o'clock in the morning, five, five hours morning, after yeah. it was supposed to be on. I actually think the and, fact that you got 20 views was an accomplishment at five o'clock in the morning. Yeah. And, you know, like, so I get done at seven o'clock, it's got 20 views. I didn't put out, maybe I did put out links on Telegram, but I didn't go to Twitter or Facebook or anything like that. You did, but, but I think you put out links at like a normal time. So yeah. nobody knew that it was like, no, you got to stay up another five hours to right, actually watch right. it. And and so I did go on Telegram at like five twenty. That, that's a very crafty trap that you uh, that you laid to ensnare people with. Well, I keep trying to find a way to get less viewers and have less engagement on my shows. That's that's what I'm going for. I, I'm trying to buck the trend. You know, everyone else. It, it's like when I was driving on the freeway today. All the rush hour traffic's on that side of the median, and then it's just Yona and a and a a car so smelled a a car that is so filled with smoke. Oh yeah, you know what I'm saying? It's just like a fucking smoke bomb, well, smoke like a Cheech and Chong van track. going yeah. down the road. Yeah, well, smoke trailing out of all right. four corners of the fucking windows. And, God, because the windows are oh. up, but you know. So like the seals well, no, aren't good I mean, anymore, it so it still gets I, out. Because I can only roll the windows down on one side. And so I roll them down about an inch, and so it circulates it. But if I do it just right, the cloud just spins inside. And just a little bit leaks out each time it circles around. That's really cool. Oh, God. And then there's that. Thing. Yeah, I'm done with you. Dash Act. I was just looking. I got three other tabs on him, but uh, I've already done my work on him. If people um, haven't yeah. figured out what he is by now, that's their problem. So the guy that oversaw he's middle management the people. Program, he works for the people and with he the power. Coordinated, and he was the guy who coordinated between Xi Zhang Li and Ralph Barrick. And then when they go to investigate yeah, he was the bad man. Of COVID nineteen, he's the guy. That's investigating himself. And so Congress, anyway, moving on. Yeah, it's time. I think he's, um, ultimately, because I'm still trying to piece all of this shit together. I think MI6 is still the ranking of all the uh, the the Western intelligence agencies, like even including Mossad, I think Mossad yeah. is still subservient to MI6. Yes. So and I think so that's that's ultimately that, who his employer is. And you know about Peter Daszak's connections to Porton Down and the Scripal poisoning. Yeah, that was not Novichok, but anyway. I said I would move on. I, I guess. I guess I'll move on. It. it well, yeah. It's, it, people think that he's like a new player in this thing, and he's not. Like he's been a part of the set for decades, and it can His it can job, be proven just with information that is available to the general public. You look at his involvement with USAID and Palantir and all the other money operations. Peter Dashak is the money guy. He's he's he's, yeah, he's, he's the, the back man. Guy. He's the back man. And I mean, the, 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 I did go to the Wikipedia. That's still up there. You know, doling out the hundred million, mm -hmm. but they but they cut it off in twenty twenty one. So I guess you know, last three years, I ain't been doing nothing. Ain't nothing been going on the last three years. Bullshit. <laughs> Bullshit. <laughs> They've been getting a and lot of shit done God, the last three years. Ten thousand fucking kinds of bats. I mean, what else, What the fuck else have they got ready to fucking? I, uh, I, I, I hate that's the question, man. I hate to even think about it. I mean, it, 
God well, you knows. Look at, you look at like the, the smart dust that DARPA created that any number of people have reported on, you know, Whitney Webb, Ryan Christian, a whole bunch of people. Like the, I mean, this is, this is not like unknown information. There's only so many BSL four labs around the world. Most countries only have one, maybe two, but there is one place on planet earth where there's four BSL labs, uh, uh, a BSL three and three BSL four labs. And that would be shout out Terrapins, Frederick, Maryland, yep. uh, home to, Fort Detrick, um, and the uh, hey, you remember that the mystery most illness place on Earth? You, you remember that mystery of uh, vaping illness that mm-hmm. was all around Fort Detrick, and and then there's all the cancer clusters around. Well, it was Fort all around Fort Detrick. It was also all around Chapel Hill. Right, right, same thing there again. The vaping illness, because yeah, this is pre coincidence. It's a total coincidence yeah. that Ralph Barrick. Works at, at UNC, Yona. And then you the know way that. they identified it was because when they did the chest x-rays, there was the streaking. Yeah, the striation. And, and, and the striations, um, which later they would call the coof or the rona. Um, yeah, eventually. Okay, you, that, that's the end of that TikTok thing. No, that won't go on TikTok. We're not allowed to talk about that on TikTok. I I know. (laughs) They already told me as much. (laughs) I was just like, damn, I thought you guys were like TikTok. They're like, no, we just like making money. True story. Oh, but you know, that, that, that. I just thought of another hashtag. Oh my God. There, there must be, you know, I need to get a paycheck from Salem, Oregon. All these goddamn Oregon fucking hashtags. Um, let's see. Send them an invoice. You never know. They might pay it. There you go. Fact this Oregon. There yeah. you go. Draw it up. Make it look all official. You know, say it's for like consulting services or, uh, Public relations, like everybody's fucking all about the public relations, you know, it's for image enhancement on the internet. Home Send of the them duck. an invoice. Be like 1200 bucks for this month. You never know. Duck, they Oregon. might pay it. Yeah. I mean, these are not the brightest people work in public service. You understand that, right? (laughs) Like, it's like the whole thing with the police force, where if you test out a little bit too intelligent, you're done. You're out of there. They don't want you to be smart enough to figure out the game while you're playing it. That's the whole point. Dude, I've already got a a fake name for my uh, PR agency here. See here, we're gonna call it uh, uh, Willamette and Coos Bay uh, Partners. There you go. Willamette and Coos Bay Partners. Public wow, relations. Wow, that sounds sophisticated. Yeah. yeah. I, I, just, I just fucking made it up. There you go. Sounds moist. Um, so, <laughs> were the vape cartridges accrued or too obvious of a delivery system for the bio? <laughs> uh, most people haven't figured it out yet, so obviously not. Well, the sad thing is, uh, number six, you know, the bioweapon would have spread faster, but so many of those dumbasses couldn't figure out that, you know, you know, you can't. It had a firewire charger port on it, and they kept trying to put their C charger in it from their cell phone. But, like, you know, when the holes don't match, you can't just... Anyway. Anyway. Because, you know, it, the the vape will keep working, but you have to recharge it. Cause it right. You got to put more juice in there. Battery. I've been anyway. told that's how they work. That you get, you get like vape juice and you 
put it in there. It, yeah, it's really it's it's like the cell phone thing. You know, you you talk on it and then it like dies and you have to like plug it in and shit. It's very complicated. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's let's make this the uh the last piece of bad news that we share with the people. Uh it was just that kind of week. But Europe has decided to go full retard with their government surveillance and control, you know, digital ID and right. biometric scanning fucking everywhere and, you know, right. just the whole nine, right? Awesome. Uh, they've, they've gotten the legislation in place. Um, and some of the countries in Europe are just like, we want to get a head start on this. We're going to fucking do it now. Uh, right. I think Germany. Norway was one or Sweden maybe I think it was Sweden uh it sounds like Sweden I think Sweden was probably a, a good guess Ace but, of Base ABBA yeah I would expect so yeah so they're setting the trend Europe's kicking off the uh the digital control grid how far behind is the United States at this point I mean you know if I'm really into my government stalking me it would make sense if my government was based in Stockholm. So, you know, obviously, um, oh, what do they call that? Isn't it called Stockholm Syndrome? Yes. Again, again. See, it all makes sense, doesn't it? it, it we're, we're, we're tying up all the loose ends, as we always do, as, you know, we're about to land here uh, for the 27th time back at the, uh, what was it? Uh, Runway 24 left at JAS, the Jasper Bell County Field. <laughs> right. <laughs> there in the That's what it is. Woods, um, that actually does offer commercial service. Um, you and three other passengers can connect to the, um, was it the uh, Robert Gates Regional Airport in Beaumont, Texas. Oh, wow. Uh, with which then your puddle jumper will then connect over to IAH uh, George Bush International Airport, which That's right. um where you can have your face scanned Eastern. by TSA. It, George Bush Airport technically is the airport for Houston, although it's like about sixty miles from downtown Houston, way the fuck out of town. As far northeast as you could get. I mean, really, if if you actually want to fly to Houston, fly to Hobby. Don't mm -hmm. don't fly to Bush. Fly to Hobby. Bush is too far. It's way too far. Take your goddamn break. Yeah, or even yeah. Beaumont. Yeah, yeah, or just fly to Beaumont. It's better. It's better that way. Trust. Yeah, me. don't do what I did, which is fly to Tyler. Because that's oh. like three hours away. Ugh. The only reason you would want to go to Tyler is if you, like, just killed President Kennedy, but you need to call in to the Dallas office from Tyler just right. to say that you were in Tyler all day. Um, speaking of George Bush, <laughs> you said, again, tying up the loose ends. Rich tapestry. Yeah, all of it. All as of James the Evan Plato says. Yeah. yeah. Nobody could cuss like, like I mean, Ladybird knew. Woo! Lyndon got a potty mouth on him. Isn't that right? I six thirty five. Shout out Dallas. Yeah. The I'll tell you, what, you don't want to cross LBJ though. He'll take your fucking head off. Ha have we ever done the uh, the Dallas song on the show here? I don't know. I don't, I don't think we have. Oh man. Well, I better act fast. Uh, I don't know if I'll be able to act fast or not. Let's see. Let's go to my channels. Oh, good. I can go to that yeah. one channel that I have. Good thing I did that. I, I'd hate to go to the other one channel that I have. And get him confused. Yeah, we uh, can't. We can't hear you when you whisper, Joe Biden. Oh, oh! You can't hear my Joe Biden whisper voice. No, you're not close enough to the mic. Oh. I got to work on that. <clears throat> Let's see here. It's called Rockwall County Line or something. 
Um, but uh, what else is happening in the world today other than more tornadoes and very weird weather? Oh, Joe Rogan is going to help uh, usher in the new world, one world religion. Remember, yeah, we covered that in the pre-show that. segment. It's they're invoking I, the thing today, and I yeah. guess from henceforth, uh, the new religion will will saunter forth to the four corners of the earth, and uh, the you one know, true God will about. finally conquer all of the other one true gods. We need a really amazing celestial event. Yeah, and everyone will live happily world. ever after. You know, like a. a another eclipse or something even cooler like a asteroid impact or something um that's kind of real that but would real be enough fun. That, that like unites everyone into this super cool new religion that would be nice aliens fun. it's gonna be aliens um, katie think, freeway so, whoa the, that's in houston but that's not what i'm looking for i'm sorry no. go ahead well, so here's how I see it going down, right? Aliens show up and they're all like, we're going to, uh, we're going to enslave you and we're going to do a lot of butt stuff. And then the antichrist shows up and he's like, I'm going to save you from the aliens so that they can't do the butt stuff. Cause I want to do the oh, butt stuff with God. you. And then Jesus is going to come back and he's going to save us. From the Antichrist, who also wants to do butt stuff to us. And Jesus is going to be like, no, nah, I'm good. But Jesus can do the butt stuff to 12 at a time. But he's good. I mean, like, you know, he might smell like fishes and loaves, but hey, free food and drink, you know what I'm saying? That's right. So in the end, it's all going to be fine. It's just between now and then, there's going to be a lot of butt stuff. So, um, better get All ready. All right, here we go. Rock wall and Dallas County line. Maybe I'll just use the search function. Just, um, I didn't realize I have 24 pages of videos on my Rumble channel now. Good Lord. It, uh, well, there you go. Instantly pulled it up. And it's five minutes long. All right. And we've probably only got three minutes left at this point. But yeah, we got I less than three minutes left. Why don't I just send the link? And we'll just let it play out. And wherever it ends, it ends. How about that? Uh, oh, I got to go to Dick Sword. Blam! There you go. Oh, wow. Shout out to the Rockwall and Dallas County line located on Interstate 30 going into uh, Dallas, Texas, where I've spent many, many a day of my life. Wrote a song in Dallas, Texas. Unfrozen Caveman. All right, let's see if it shows us more wonderful ads on Rumble. Oh, you know, God damn it. Feeling speaker. So feeling put Democrats in charge I can't, of powerful committees. Allowing I can't do anything because I linked in. All mosquitoes in the area so we have to, minutes. we have to this fucking simple but brilliant just take it. You can do tonight to eliminate all mos- Yes, yeah, Dallas, man. Big D. <laughs> I was thinking maybe I should send you the page before the video. That way you could... Click on the video and then back out of it. Go back in like I do. Get me on the LBJ today. Oh, oh, my God. Gonna call Warner's in the fast lane. PGBT, good day. Little frog man, this dance bill again. 
Down Cumberland Valley, concrete metal fast printers alley. Finally up the big hill, 65 by all the friends. Cumberland Parkway, for the metal grass for rally. 13 hours. Taylor line, green and white side, all downhill from here. Campbellsville wrong man, food of the moon soul. There's Nashville. Finish line, old draw sick line, all downhill from here. 68, 88 grade. Campbellsville, 